Hey, how you doing? I'm back. It's been five and a half weeks or so since I did a video. And it was kind of hard getting back in the groove again because when you, you've been in the hospital and not feeling quite right, you know, sometimes you get in a little creative slump and it's kind of hard to get back on your horse and ride. It doesn't matter how many years experience you have in doing crafts or how much you love it. It's just, it's sometimes kind of hard. I, I went, oh, almost a month before I was even back down here in the messy workshop. But I finally started getting my act together and I know I had promised you some time ago. Something's in my eye. <laughs> Sorry. I know I promised you some time ago we were going to do decoupage on brass and so that was my goal for this week and we are going to do some of that. We're going to use the tissue paper. It's really easy and I have some cool results with that. We're also going to do a little bit of ink stamping on brass which is something I've been meaning to do for a long time. And then this morning on Facebook my friend Joan Williams of Little Ruby at Etsy uh, showed us a really cool pair of rusty black earrings at the Beast of Boutique's creative group that she had made by scrubbing them back a little bit and distressing them and then putting a black uh, rubber uh, stamp ink on there for more design texture. Um, if you go to uh, the creative group you'll see them and they're really really cool. So we're going to do a little bit of that, show you how that goes. Um, and then the tissue paper and uh, you're just going to have to pardon me because yes I am in my pajamas and I really don't care. Um, I have kind of a nasty midline incision and it's not quite healed yet and I don't feel good in street clothes so we're doing good just to do this video but dang it we're going to have a good time anyway. So come on over and we're going to do some ink stamping on brass. So here we go. We got some brass stampings here that I've simply stamped with stays on jet black ink. This is the stuff we carry on the website and this is the best kind of ink for stamping on brass. Another thing you can do with stays on jet black ink is um, if you want to make an ancient bath, I can't say the ancient, mordant bath. If you go to the website you'll see uh, Harry Wood has given us a very very nice tutorial on making um, etched brass and you start by stamping it with stays on ink. Well, that's not what we're going to do today but anyway it's the same stuff you use for that. But it's really really cool to stamp on brass. As you can see I did a bunch of keys here and some raw brass. This is some chocolate brass that's buffed back. I got a little postcard here and some little squiggly things. These are not sealed and you do need to seal it if you're going to just go with it as jewelry and not put in an etchant bath, which is another subject entirely. So they're really cool just how they are. Um, you can uh, jazz them up a little bit with some uh, Perfect Pearls, clear embossing ink and Perfect Pearls around the edges and so forth. But I like them just like this and I'm going to just put um, probably none design sealant over top of it. I've had really good success with none design sealant on top of um, black stamped ink brass. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. But first, what good would it be if we didn't do a little stamping? And you guys, I always tell you, I'm the ID girl. I am not the world's best person on a lot of these techniques. I basically know how they go. I show you the principle and then you take it from there. So I've inked up my stamp. Now one thing I do know is when you're going to do this, you can't be moving your stamp around. You got to get it on there where you want it and down straight. And don't move it. Ha! See what happens? It sticks as I press hard because I want a good clear stamp. But see? That's all it is. Went really good, didn't it? Except for it picked up. Okay, now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it on this key. And I want to get that right down to the center of the key. That's how I want it. Now see, I wiggled it, so it's probably going to come out. No, it came out okay. But try not to wiggle it, because if you wiggle it, your results will be uneven. Let's do these two guys. Maybe these be earrings. So I'm going to ink my thing. Let's see how good we get. I'm going to try to get like right in the middle of it. Okay. It's kind of hard doing two for earrings, because you, you won't get exactly the same stamp. Well, unless you're really brilliant at this. I'm not that experienced. But you know, that's kind of cool, right? That looks good. Now let's try something else. I'm going to try this round disc. 
And I have this great big stamp. You guys have seen this. Who makes this? Hampton Art Stamps by Jill Meyer. I, I bought this a long, long time ago, but it's a real popular stamp. You guys have probably seen it. There's a lady's face on here I'm going to go for. So I'm going to take my pad, my uh, ink block here, and I'm going to just get it on there really good. Don't laugh, you stamping people. This is not my forte, but I can make it work on here. This is chocolate oxy. It just came in, as a matter of fact. Now, if I go down like this, I might have trouble you know, realizing where I'm at on the pad, so I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to set this down, and I'm going to put my disc right over it and press. Fairly hard, because I want to get all the ink on there that, that I can. Okay, now I'm going to have to peel it off because it'll kind of stick to the pad. And you know what? It didn't come out too good. But here's the deal. You know, I'm almost glad that happened. Hold on, Rob. I found out that if you don't get a good impression, like I didn't give you a good impression with that, huh? A little goo gone will take her right off. Or it did earlier anyway. Yeah. So I'm not going to use this again till that kind of gas is off because the goo gone might prevent uh, the ink from sticking. So we're not going to try that one. Let's try it again. We are not ones to give up. Right? We do not give up. So I'm going to ink that again. I didn't get enough ink on it. And that's what happened. Okay, now it should be good. I'm so clumsy. Now, I'm probably going to get her face and something else in there. But oh well. Let's go for it. It's about the principle this time. Let's see if we have more success this time. I did earlier today. I did a bunch of them like this, so, with this pack. Yeah. The only thing is, is I moved it around a little bit, so it's not as crisp as I might have liked, but it's not bad. Not bad. Okay. Now, I've got enough ink on here. Maybe, let's try it. I don't know how this is going to come out. I'm feeling bold. Let's see. I go in the middle here. I'm going to have some cleaning up to do with this. You always want to clean up your pads. Okay. Let's just sit this key on there yes, and see what happens. And try not to squish it around. I'm just straight flat down. Of course, now I'm going to have some cleanup because I got some on the back, but that's okay. That's cool. Look at that. Look what we discovered together. Awesomeness. Now let's see. Maybe I can just get part of her face on this disc. See, I'm I'm liking this now. I'm fun with it. Do you ever do that? You start out at first and it's like crummy and you hate it. See, now that's not so good. But I don't know. I like it in a weird way. But anyways, you start out and it's crummy, and not so good. But then you get on a roll. Finally, you get on a roll and it starts coming together for you. So what I'll do later is I'll take this. Uh, stays on stamp cleaner and I'll clean that mess up on here and here so that I can use other inks. But anyway, that's basically this. Now, like I said, you have to seal it. So we're going to want to walk over to another surface and show you how to seal it. But that's not this minute. Right now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the tissue paper over top as a decoupage agent. And then we're going to do sealant. And I'll show you some that are done and how they came out. Okay, show you where we're going with this. We're going to start out basically with a brass stamping like this. And we're going to end up doing a surface treatment with tissue paper on it, decoupage style with uh, collage podge and the mat, and cover it. And then after that, we'll go over to the other surface and I'll show you how I seal it. But anyways, it's really not hard. And there's a lot of flex with it. Um, let's start, I'm going to start with this. I know this has a design on it. I kind of hate to go over it, but it's it's a really good piece for this application. And this is going to fit right. So basically, you start with some tissue paper. I think this is Seven Gypsies. And no, I don't have it on the site yet, but it's coming in soon. So if you want to wait and get yours from me, that's cool. If not, I understand. But anyway, basically, so I'm looking to see where it's going to fit. And then... I'm going to take some of my collage podge on a foam brush, 
like you see here. And this is, is easy cleanup. You just wash with it. It's non-toxic. So anyway, so I'm going to cover that really good. I want to cover that really, really good. But I don't want to have any glurpy blobs of decoupage medium under there because I want to get this on here really flat. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of like this seal better. Maybe we'll go with that. So get on there, and I'm just going to lay my tissue paper over it and kind of burnish down with my fingers so that you can kind of see the stamping coming up through the back and then I'm just going to take my fingernails this is one case where having a little bit of fingernails helps but you don't have to and just tear it away and you know what don't worry if some of it comes off because we're going for a distressed look so if you don't get it off flush or if a piece comes off you know what you can piece it too when you do the equipage with tissue paper just put another piece oh, piece of the I can't talk another piece of the tissue paper right over it and it'll go right over and you'll have layered decoupage which is also very very cool I'm just showing you the premise of it it's going to be up to you to take it and run with it and make it something fabulous, which I know you will do see that little piece that it came out this came out real nice and even though this one now you're not done you got to do another layer of this stuff okay and I've really got a bit on, much on the brush but I'll wipe it off with this rag but you want to get it all covered okay all right now I'm going to set this aside what I have found is that and when you go to do this be very careful and gentle if you don't want a big piece ripped off of it because you know if you use a rag to take the excess off it could take some of the paper off where you don't want it to we're going to do another one we're going to do an irregular one so you can see how that goes and then after we do a few I'm going to take them over and use the uh, Ranger heat it tool and show you how quick I can get this decoupage medium to dry so I'm just going to go in the middle of this piece because it has this really cool edge that I would like to leave remain and I have a couple of this piece done over there that you can see how cool they are so I'm just going to take this little piece here out of here and I'm going to put it on there I have to make sure my music is pointing the right side up all morning I kept putting the tissue paper on and the music was pointing upside down <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't too good. Of course, some people might say, well, I wouldn't know the difference. See how some of that tore off? Doesn't matter. We want a distressed look. So I'm going to just start pulling it. Yeah, some people might say, well, I wouldn't know anyway. But uh, most people would. I spend life looking stupid enough in public. I'm doing videos in my pajamas. So see, this is very very distressed it's very pulled away which is all good it's it's totally cool for it to be like that so I'm gonna put some more over it and now what you can do is see after this dries you can do some perfect pearls with some clear ink around the sides and add some color to the design on the side or you could add some little beads like um, how this all got started was Andrea Dallin from the Netherlands showed us a picture some time ago of some she'd done like this and got our interest really piqued and she would add little collage elements to it too so that's also uh, an option she put some little tiny Valentini beads now I'm sure you want to know how to do this this is a little bit more complicated but not bad she says <laughs> anyway this other one I did wasn't bad it came out really easy so I've got that pretty well coated now I need to find a piece this will be big enough so we just lay that on there and then burnish it down you could even turn this over to make sure you get it all the way out to the edges okay and now we'll just start pulling away and don't worry if it a little bit comes you know because unless you want it perfect and in that case okay fine but uh, I don't. I like it distressed. Distressed is fine for me. Let's go in there and get that. And get that. 
Almost there, guys. All right. Is that cool or what? I'll just take my... I love these Tim Holtz tonic scissors. They're the bomb. We carry them at the site, and we probably always will, because they are just so useful. You can even use them for metal sometimes. Though we're going to have some new metal shears real, real soon. They're about to come in, and they're my favorites of all time. But for all purpose, the Tim Holtz tonic shears, that's what you want. Okay, so now we did that. We got it. We got it going. We got that on there. So now we need to seal it. Which I'm not, you know, this is not going to be the end all seal of this. I'm going to do something else to it. It might be non design seal and it might be Aileen's paper glaze. Um, I did use some of this Royal Dimensional Magic Coat, which we do have the site, and I did not like it in this application. For other things, I know a lot of people love that stuff, but I didn't like it for this kind of thing. But there are many, many glazes. Experiment with them and have fun. You'll find the one that works for you. But I'm liking non design sealant. But so there you go. All right, now let's get to something a little bit more complicated. This piece is was in my uh, Gilder's Paste in Nail Polish uh, video. I don't know, four or five videos back where we shaved Gilder's Paste into nail polish and painted stuff. So anyway, I had painted this heart with uh, Pinotage. Gilder's paste in nail polish. Well, now I decoupaged half of it, and then I put another little charm on here. And uh, actually, and then I did some pearl, not pearl X, it was perfect pearls, the age patina, which we carry at the site around the edge here. And that's really kind of cool. And I kind of got the idea of putting this on here from Brassy Steamington, has been showing us a lot of really cool hearts that are kind of romantic for her. But uh, I like how this one came out. So I'm going to show you how to do the decoupage on this side. This is the same heart, which we carry at this site. But um, it is not, it's not painted. But for lack of time and all that stuff, we're just going to go with um, what we have. So I'm going to take a piece of paper, and I'm going to put this on there like that. Okay? So, and then tear it off to give you the idea. But I went over a painted piece. Okay? on this original one. But just to give you the technique of the decoupage with the tissue paper. Burnish that down in as good as you can and start to See that's awesome. You're just going to have part. Now if you want to do that whole piece you could just keep putting on pieces and layering it until this whole thing was covered. And then you'd have different type of things. In fact, maybe I will just do another little piece to show you how that will go. And I, I might have got that music upside down there. Oh well, music lovers, music uh, educators and all that. Sorry. I do read music, just not super well. Okay, but you see how that goes? Okay, now i got a nice um, postal stamp here. Maybe I'll put that on there, too. you just got to tear it so you don't get anything on it. And it wants to stick to you, of course. You don't get anything on there that you don't want. But it's just, you know, this has all been done before. <laughs> this is not, oh, Brenda Sue came up with something novel. Oh, by no means. This has been done for so long. But maybe not in metal so much. You know, I'm sure there are some videos out there for metal, but um, this is the way I do it. If you've got a better way, cool. If you want to share it with me, that would be better. Just don't write to me here at YouTube because I I can't seem to make the respond thing work, and it, it always error. Try again. Write to me at bsuboutiques.com, please. Or at Brenda Sue lands down at Facebook. Okay, we're going to go over to the other surface so that I can show you how I finish this with non design sealant. Okay, so anyway, um, here's a bunch of stuff I played around with this morning. Some came out great, some didn't. Um, so examples of stuff that came out great, I thought this did. I like these that were stamped. I painted this key and then I resined the top of it. Uh, I might need another layer. Here is uh, one of those hearts I told you about. I did Pearl X. I got a little bit of spotting in that, so I might want to do another layer. 
This one came out kind of good too. This one came out partial. There's just a little bit of decoupage on that and then then none. I keep saying Pearlex. Perfect Pearls. The aged patina. That's what I did. This is stamped. This is a cool piece that just came in today. It looks like a tie. I'm going to drill this and make a necklace. But this is all stamped with some distressed powder on there. None design sealant. So anyway, I'm going to show you how none design sealant goes over top. And I don't know what happened to that cuff that I did earlier. But anyway, this is non design sealant. And it's a resinous topping. It's very, very much like, you know, your better resins. Um, really, in a perfect world, I should be using ice resin. Honestly, truly. But I did none because it sets up a little faster. And I'm using a polymer clay tool, actually, to apply it. Um, I got the idea because my friend Kate said on Facebook this morning that she uses... Um, popsicle stick to just drip and so when I came down here and started messing around today I says what about if I use a polymer clay tool and we don't worry if it goes in that little hole there because you can just pop it out later and this worked out pretty good now what you have to do is you have to watch you get it on real real even which I can't say that I have and I don't want it to run off the sides either because I want to stay in the middle as much as I can but we're running out of time so that's how it's going to be for now um, this one, actually, I should have put the heated tool on it first, so it may not set up too good. But Anyway, the heated tool is really cool because you can get real close. I don't carry them at the site yet because we still have some of the Doris embossing guns that are on sale and we're selling them off. Um, this one also costs a good bit more, so I don't know. You'll have to tell me what you like. But a lot of people have told me that they prefer this, and it doesn't blow UT around like you, you might have seen in my video, how it blows it around. and different things but um, yeah you really need to make sure that that mod not the collage podge stuff the, the decoupage medium is um, ooh, hot don't do that decoupage medium is set up really well and dry so this may actually not cure because I did that I forgot to do the heated tool because I was hurrying but anyway I'm doing it just in the middle here and letting it kind of run back into the crevice but isn't that cool? This is a chocolate ox, and I didn't buff it back on the edges either. I should have, because that would have been neat. But actually, I might do um, perfect pearls around the edge. But that's how I do it. I use this, and here's a couple of pieces from yesterday that I did. This one came out good. It was an old verdigris piece, and I put some things on it and decoupaged. And then here's a little piece, and I made it into a little pendant and put some behind there, and then I... Um, put a little ornament on the top and some little beads but anyway I'm just getting started and playing around with this it's just it's a journey it's going to be fun the more I do it the more I like it the more I'm finding out this one was polymer clay I did over polymer clay that I cut out um, the more I do it the more I like it here's the, here's the stays on ink with the non design sealant over top. I really like this non design sealant over the stays on ink. I, it's my favorite so far. I haven't tried ice resin yet. I know it would probably only be better. Um, but I kind of like the little jar and the no mix in this application. But uh, you know me, I'm, I'm a lover of ice resin most of all. Anyway, I hope this starts you on a new journey. I hope you see some possibilities, some ways you can do it even better. And, and share your ideas with me and come and join us at the BC Boutique's creative group at Flickr because we'd love to have you there. What I do is when you put up a good picture and it's something I can use, I've been putting on my Pinterest boards and they're getting retweeted and it's all good. So, uh, you know, I can get you a lot of promotion that way if you come and join us and you're using some of our products. So, have a wonderful creative week, and I hope to do this again for you real soon.